Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, all of you. Now, um, first of all, I would like to thank Newbridge for inviting me to talk about a very, very exciting topic, Spondali Arthropathy, Leave Limitations Behind. And first of all, I have no financial disclosures or conflict. And we will start to talk about this new medications that's approved for various uh, diseases under the umbrella of spondyl arthropathies. It's good to know that spa or spondyl arthropathies are umbrella of certain diseases that share common clinical features, either ankylospondylitis, which is no more there. It is called radiological axial spa, non-radiological axial spa, PSA, which has both peripheral as well as the axial spa. Now let us focus more about the uh, psoriatic arthritis PSA. PSA, as you all know, is a very complex disease, very heterogeneous disease. Have previously we said has six domains, but nowadays we know it has eight domains. We added already the IBD and uveitis. So the patients with PSA, they might present with peripheral asymmetrical oligoarthritis, polyarthritis, uh, axial, dactylitis, enthesitis, and so on. So this is a complex, very heterogeneous disease. Now, why this is important to all of us? Because we have to think about the pathogenesis and what are the important inflammatory cytokines that mediate the clinical presentations. If you think about the skin and peripheral arthritis, it's almost similar cytokines, IL-17, IL-23, B19 subunit, 12-23 inhibitors, TNF, and therefore blocking any one of these cytokines will control the disease. If you talk about spine and axial disease, it's mainly related to the IL-17 and TNF. I and uveitis at this moment is mainly related to the TNF. However, we have reassuring data about IL-17 and JAK inhibitors in a patient with previous history of uveitis, but if you have patients with active uveitis, the only medications that approved are TNF. Now give me a few seconds about this slide because this is very important to understand why IL-17 is very important in pathogenesis of PSA. Now, first of all, there are three diameters of uh, IL-17. It could be IL-17 AA, AF, FF, and this is very important, is telling us or explain why we have some time patient who failed to respond after a time when we was given anti-IL-17 uh, anti or IL-17 inhibitors. Number two, IL-17 inhibitors, which one of the major inflammatory cytokines in PSA, could be triggered by two different pathways, either IL-23 dependent or IL-23 non-dependent. So again, your patient might have IL-23 inhibitors and improved until after a time they get flare. And this explains what we called it in immunology, escape pathway. So this is very important to keep it in our mind. IL-17 are or is very important inflammatory cytokines, three dimers, and number two could be activated by two different pathways. And this explains why the patient lacked the response after a time. And again, this is explain the role of IL-17A and IL-17F in pathogenesis of inflammation and the newborn formation in PSA and axial spondyle arthropathies. So it's very important to think about the way to block IL-17AA, AF, and FF, which is the new concept now when we talk about bimikizumab. So again, this is explained, the three diamers, they will bind to the receptor, and then this will mediate several different autoimmune diseases like psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, and spondyl arthropathies. And again, you could block AA, AF, but it's still FF active, and that's lead to more uh, or lack of response after a time. So I wish after this introduction, we understand the importance of blocking all possible dimers uh, of IL-17 uh, cytokines. And if you see here, we have three different IL-17 inhibitors. Some people, they called it first generation, second generation, and third generation. 
But anyway, the most important point, the, the previous available two agents have no rule on aisle 17 FF. And as you see in the slide, the affinity of different uh, drugs toward different uh, diameters of aisle 17. So the previous two agents are blocking I-17 AA, AF, but still FF, no effect on this diameter. The only drug that blocks all three diameters is Pimikizumab. Pimikizumab or Bimizlex has been approved by EMA and Saudi FDA for three different indications. Psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, axial spondyl arthropathies. So it has similar spectrum of approval for the other IL-17. So it has been approved for PSO, PSA, as well as the ax axial uh, span. Now we'll talk over the next few minutes about the studies that lead to approval of this medication. And I would like to draw your attention about these studies by a few important points. Now it's called be optimal for those who are biological naive and be complete for those who have been exposed or inadequately responding to the anti-TNF agents. First of all, the primary endpoint is at week 16. And this gives IL-17 in general a huge advantage, which is the quick onset of the action. And number two, the primary endpoint is ACR50. And I would like to raise your attention that we should not look anymore to ACR20. We should follow our colleagues in dermatology. Previously, they were looked to BASI 50, and no more anyone now is looking to BASI 50. All of them are looking now, and then BASI 75, and now they are looking to BASI 90 and 100. So from rheumatology point of view, we are looking now to ACR 50. Look to the ACR 50 now. In both trial, be optimal, naive, and be complete, TNF inadequate responder. At week 16, it's almost exactly a similar, around 44% of patients were responding to bimikizumab, whether they have been exposed or they are biological naive. At the end of one year, more than 50% of patients achieving ACR 50. I'm not talking about ACR. 20, ACR 20 at 70 percent. And almost 40 percent of patients achieving ACR 70 if they are bio-naive and 35.5 anti-TMNF inadequate responder. So what's different from the others? If you look to the numbers, they are exactly similar, whether the, your patient has been exposed to the previous biologics or they are bio-naive, they responded very well to this new agent. Now, when we talk about MDA, at week 16, 45% of patients will achieve MDA, which you know is very stringent outcome. So MDA, 45%, and that's go up with the time to 55 at the end of one year. And again, even if patient failed the previous biological agents, almost near to half of them, they will achieve MDA. And the third important point, they used the NRI, which is non-responder um, uh, imputation, which is a very stringent statistical method. So this is very reassuring about this new IL-17 inhibitors, and I think because it blocks all three diameters of IL-17. When we look to the skin, I am now talking about BASI-100, no single skin spots. It is 50% of patients at week 16 in bionave, and even if they have been exposed to the anti-TNF, it's more than 55%. At the end of one year, it's near to two-thirds of the patient they achieved complete, complete skin clearance. Now, this is BSO studies, but sometime we need the data when we wanted to choose which medication I should include it in my hospital, in my formulary drug. So when we look to the data for psoriasis, and we wish to have head-to-head -head for every indication, for every medication in rheumatology. So look to the now head-to-head -head studies in patients with psoriasis. And look now, the outcome is BASI 100 during one year. 
They compare Bimikizumab against Stilala, which is IL-1223, and I think the slide explains itself, the superiority. And then they compare to Adaliumab, which is anti-TNF. Again, the superiority is very obvious. And very, very interesting that they compare it to the similar class, to the similar agents that block IL-17, which is Cosentix, Sikakinumab, and as you see, the superiority when you talk about skin psoriasis. I think this is very important because sometimes you didn't know which agent would you choose if they are similar from rheumatology point of view. So what's about the other disease domains? It's not about only peripheral arthritis. When we look to the nail, we use the modified NAPC score, zero complete clearance of nail psoriasis has been achieved in 40% of patients at week 16, and we all know the difficult control of nail psoriasis, but at the end of one year, 71% of patients achieved complete remission of nail psoriasis. And again, I was really surprising when I saw the data about bimikizumab because whether your patient naive or have been failed, anti-TMNF, almost similar result. And we look at the end of one year, at 67.3, the clearance of nail psoriasis. Enthesitis. At week 16, half of your patient will have complete resolution of enthesitis. At the end of one year, 70%. And if patients have or failed the TNF before, almost 60% of patients will have complete resolution of enthesitis at one year. Dactylitis, 82% complete resolution of dactylitis at week 16, and almost 90% complete resolution of dactylitis at the end of one year. Again, it, if you see on your right hand, is almost the same if you have if you have a patient who failed anti-TNF with regard to dactylitis. And again, to call the medication DMAR, they have to show inhibition of radiological progression. There was no radiological progression at up to week 16, and this is where the patient was shifted from placebo to the active arm, and as you see at the end of the year, there was no radiological progression in almost 90% of patients with PSA. So we have a drug that controls peripheral arthritis, dactylitis, enthesitis, skin, with superiority of the skin to the other IL-17 inhibitors, and 90% no radiological progression. So we have a drug that's very effective. We need to look to the safety profile. As you see, in both trials, be optimal and be complete. There was no major safety signals when we talk about bimikizumab. This is in details to those who are interested. Again, it was safe. There was no major safety signals when we talk about bimikizumab in treating PSA patients. Now, what's also a good point about this agent, the new agents that recently approved in our country, it's that in patients with psoriatic arthritis, it's very simple. You need to give the patient one dose. It comes as a pre-filled uh, bin, 160 milligram every four weeks. Just to draw your attention, this is very important. The only IL-17 for PSA that no need for loading dose if you have patient with PSA. The only thing that where you need loading dose if you have patient with moderate to severe skin psoriasis. And therefore, PSA is a very complex disease. That's why when you choose the medication, you have to think about a medication that cover all the disease domains, skin, peripheral, axial, dactylitis, enthesitis. IL-17A and IL-17F, and this is very important that we know it from the immunology, that both A and F are very important for driving the inflammation and the new bone formation in a patient with PSA, and axial spondyl arthropathy. The only and the first IL-17 inhibitors that block both IL-17 A, 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 F, F, F is uh, bimikizumab or bimizilix. And it has 
a quick concept of the action, and we know it that from IL-17. I think this is a group related that they characterized by very quick concept of the action. Within one week, you will see the response, and a constant response across all that the treatment threshold. And the very important about these two studies that they targeted ACR 50, BASI 100, and MDA, which we know they raised our bar. And now we all talk about ACR 50, BASI 90 or 100, and MDA. And a very important and very reassuring that whether your patient is naive or have been exposed and failed anti TNF, this agent is working very well. And it also showing a good and excellent response for all the other domains, including enthesitis, dactylitis, and nail disease. And very important, it is safe, well tolerated, tolerated across all the studies of bimikizumab. Thank you very much.